Hey, fake friends. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let us explain. It's free. Yeah, a lot of those other podcast places want to charge you money every month, like dozens of dollars. Like dozens of dollars. We don't even know what that is because we don't see it. No. And that's a phrase people use often, right? Like you go to a store and you say, how much is that? And they go, that'll be one dozen dollars. That's exactly it. Yeah. Yes. Uh, there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. We're doing that right now on a phone. I love technology. Amazing. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can also make money from your podcast. No minimum listenership required. You know what that means. Dozens of dollars straight in your pocket. You got dozens of listeners. You're going to be making dozens of dollars, potentially. I mean, don't hold them to it. It's really, you got to put in the work. Yeah. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. So download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Bye. Hey, fake friends. Listen to Fake Headlines podcast using Stitcher Premium. Use promo code Fake Headlines for one free month. Listen to some of your favorite shows ad free with Stitcher Premium, like Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend, My Favorite Murder, Having Funlessness with Jen Kirkman, Natch Butte, Office Ladies, Prompt in Circumstance, WTF with Mark Marin, and so many more. Plus, you get access to Stitcher Originals, bonus episodes, comedy albums, and more. Only four ninety nine a month, or thirty four ninety nine for a whole year. Go to Stitcher.com slash premium to sign up today. Again, use promo code fake headlines for one month free. Bye. Hello, I'm Tiffany Dillon. And I'm Kevin Dillon. And, and this, this is, is Fake, fake Headlines, headlines Podcast. Podcast. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Fake Headlines Podcast, episode number 87. Hi, welcome. Welcome to the show. Here we are. We're excited to be here. We really are. This is fun. This is what we look forward to in quarantine life. Yeah. We look forward to talking to our friends. Our fake friends. Our fake friends via the World Wide Web. Yeah. And we uh, we hope that you enjoy talking to us, even though we can't hear you. We appreciate that you talk back to us. Don't talk back to me. But we can't hear you. And, you know, that's okay. I mean, you we can hear you if you want us to i mean we can uh you know, you can send us voice messages on our anchor website that's true that is a that is a feature on there if you go to uh, anchor.fm slash fake headlines podcast you can leave us a voicemail yeah or you know just talking to the microphones that we have hidden around your house <laughs> yeah <laughs> looking at you gary <laughs> i know what you're up to <laughs> yeah so um but yeah, we're glad we're here. We're doing it. Episode 87. What's new, Kevin? Uh, well, uh, not much. <laughs> <laughs> well, not much. Uh, you know, the huge. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just hanging out in the house, working in the house. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> just sleeping in the house. Uh, never leaving the house, pretty much, <laughs> is what we're doing. We went for a couple of nice walks the last week. We did. The weather was nice for approximately two hours in Buffalo recently, so we took yeah. full advantage of that before yeah. it started to snow again. Yep. It's probably happening this weekend. It actually is. On yeah. Friday, it is going to snow Happy Mother's Day. Uh, uh, yeah, happy Mother's Day, everybody. Uh, if you're a mom or if you have a mom or or came from a mom. Or uh, love a mom. Or love a mom. Uh, happy Mother's Day. Yeah. <laughs> happy Mother's Day. <laughs> uh. <laughs> if you came from a mom is what really got me. <laughs> I'm still sitting on that. That's funny. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's great. Mother's Day is on the 10th. Um, the world in uh, Western New York got you snow, Mom. So enjoy that. I hope you can go out and maybe uh, slide down a hill. And make a snow angel because yeah. you're my angel. Oh, look at you. Oh, Mom. I do, love you. Do you write cards? I don't. I really should, though. I really I should uh, search uh, Hallmark yeah. website for yeah. job postings. Yeah. Uh, Tiffany, speaking of uh, being in the house and being uh, the, the world right now, the, uh-huh. uh, the, the very socially distant world of, oh, yeah. of quarantining that we're in, yeah. uh, I, I was recently reading an article about uh, the various uh, popular foods uh, that people are cooking or baking uh, during quarantine. The most popular searches for recipes right now uh, by state 
interesting. Uh, and I was okay. wondering if you wanted to, ch- to chat about this for a minute. Yeah. Uh, if I'm wondering what you think some of these states, their, what their number one recipe might be currently okay. uh, during the uh, current global pandemic. Okay. So if I were to say, Tiffany, what do you think people in Nevada are searching for right now? What is the most popular recipe being searched for in the state of Nevada? And now this is from... Who's gathering this uh, information? Which I'm going to say it's Pedialyte. Pedialyte. <laughs> because people are probably hung over and have been up all night, right? That is true. In Las Vegas. But according to Google... The there no- is more of a state, isn't there? Wow. Well, it's mainly it's Las Vegas and then it's uh, Reno. Yep. And then uh, uh, that's it. Yeah. A couple tumbleweeds. <laughs> and that's approximately the entire state. Desert mountains. Uh, actually, the number one item search for according to google in nevada for food during the pandemic you'll never guess this one pork loin oh nope but leave it to las Sorry. vegas <laughs> leave it to las vegas to be searching for loins <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's legal there and pork yes it is <laughs> you want a pork a loin you want to head down to it's all legal the brothel <laughs> <laughs> more of a brothel because they be cooking in broth never mind that was stupid <laughs> <laughs> I like where you're going though with Pedialyte because it's a city that is perpetually hung over. Yeah. Well, the city, again, we're just saying Las Vegas. We don't know what else goes on in Nevada. Sorry, yeah. folks. If, if you know more about the state of Nevada, then please tell us. Yeah, I, don't, we, I don't know. We don't know. We're just, we're making it, we're filling in the blanks we're with just our own us. minds. <laughs> so if, Tiffany, if I were to say Wisconsin, what do you think the most popular search in Wisconsin has been as of late? I feel like they have enough cheese, so maybe not that. I would say maybe to pair with it, it would be macaroni. Very close. Ham. Okay. Ham. Okay. Okay. Cheese and ham. Maybe a mac and macaroni and cheese and a ham, perhaps. Situation. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. What about? I don't maybe know. take a look at the list. Okay. 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 How about? I'm just gonna just gonna scroll and then put my finger on a state. Mm. If you know what I mean. Florida. <laughs> Name of my sex tape. Florida. Yeah. I think they have an abundance of oranges there, right? And and gators. Usually. I yeah. want to say gator ribs. Mm, what pairs well with those, you say? Zucchini. <laughs> of course. Yeah. A yeah. classic a classic barbecue of gator ribs and zucchini. Yeah. Of course. That yeah. sounds good, right? Usually I, the place the times I've had gator it's always been served kind of like a pig roast. It's a gator with like a zucchini sticking out of its mouth. Yeah. That's classic Florida right there. Yeah. Instead of like the old timey pig with an apple. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yep. Um, what do you what do you think about Maine? Maine. Lobster. Yeah. But would they be searching for recipes for lobster? Potentially. They might be running out of things. They to might be, for. yeah. Uh, they might be Googling, uh, I'm going to go with lobster. Lobster? Yeah. They, they, uh, how to make a lobster? I don't think they know any better. Oh. I, um, the, the answer is actually bread. Really? Okay. But I assume that it's inspired by the uh, delicious little uh, cheese... Cheddar um, biscuits? Cheddar biscuits that they serve at Red Lobster. I you know, right. like they're just like, w- we're literally the Red Lobster. I don't, we <laughs> could do this. We right. don't, we don't need that stinking restaurant no. here. It's like Buffalo having Buffalo Wild Wings. It makes zero sense. It, it really does. They, why is that, does that exist here? Why is there one here? I don't know. <laughs> How I never thought about open? that. Is there a Red Lobster in Maine? That seems ridiculous. Like, I don't know. Isn't every restaurant a Red Lobster in Maine? I know. Essentially, like a much better version. Yeah. Of <laughs> <laughs> it's it's probably full of a lot more rage. I feel like I feel like honestly, the only people I've encountered who are from Maine usually aren't like full of sunshine. So really, that's where. Ra- <laughs> oh, it's like that band Rage Rage Against the Lobster. <laughs> They're on, they were going to go on tour this summer. Rage against the mamine. <laughs> that was supposed to be mamine, mamine, mamine. <laughs> I, I pictured a mummy for some reason. Rage against the mummy. I can't. I imagined a mummy lobster wrapped in cloth. All right, let's try. What about this one? Colorado. Colorado. Well, we know what they're doing there. Skiing. Skiing. And what do you need when you ski? Carbohydrates. Yeah. So I'm going to go with sourdough bread. Mm, no, but you could use that to make egg salad. 
<laughs> have an egg salad sandwich that's true they're searching for eggs like the most popular recipe is egg salad egg. and like how do you not know how to make egg salad i don't know you cut up an egg you throw mayonnaise and am i it, looking at it done. right it says what you know this is what your state's cooking yeah because i think the first state listed there alabama also a salad alabama's making chicken salad like they're looking up chicken salad recipes why I don't you just dice up chicken it's chick diced up chicken and mayonnaise you know what arizona's looking up lemonade <laughs> it's because it's hot there you live in the hottest state in the world and you're just now deciding what a let, let's look at some thirst quenching beverages it's so fucking hot here i like that there's just one straight line on the map of uh hamburger and hamburger meat and it's indiana iowa kansas and kentucky <laughs> <laughs> all in a row <laughs> oh in <and> michigan <laughs> that's really weird They're, they all <laughs> America's and, hamburger and Missouri. Be- that's America's hamburger belt right there. <laughs> and Nebraska. <laughs> Why are they all into burgers? That's so strange. Not that everybody's not into burgers, but that's weird. Oh, let's not forget Ohio and Oklahoma. Burgers. And Texas. Wow. And West Virginia. To Those be, make sense. Throw me a food and I'm going to tell you what state. Banana pudding. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> banana He's gonna throw pudding. you a b- food. I feel- <laughs> That's the first one I made eye contact with. <laughs> no one ever forgets the first time they made eye contact with bread pudding or banana pudding. <laughs> bread pudding. I want to say bread pudding. That sounds like I'm going to go with Georgia. No, but you're not far off geographically. Hmm. What's near Georgia? Alabama? No. That is near there, yeah. Uh, South Dakota. <laughs> Way off. <laughs> I'm just going to cut to the chase. It's Virginia. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I've heard of that place. Um, I would like to say that the uh, most unoriginal uh, is Vermont with pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> They're very... Uh, they have an abundance of syrup there. They they do. It's not as good as New York State's. I'm sorry, Vermont. Um, yeah, that's really that's one. I think we've talked about this on the show before. Like it's living in New York State, you find more Vermont maple syrup than you do New York State produced maple syrup in stores. But I only know New York. Well, you maple used to syrup. you used to get maple syrup from a tree in your yard. So that's true. You're the most northern New York person. <laughs> you should you you should have a key to the city if a city <laughs> were to exist up north. You get a key to the township. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do uh, one last one here, um, and uh, this state has, I would say the the classiest. Uh, uh food um and it's it's crepe oh really which which state do you think has crepe i'm gonna go with a classy ass state and that's got to be connecticut no Mm, massachusetts nope i know you think it's northeast right you think it's northeast that's those are like where the classy no offense rest of america but most of your classy cities are in the north (laughs) it's not even rhode island (laughs) so it's a southern it's a southern uh state or maybe it could not maybe not there's a whole other i know i'm trying to judge about your face how you're reacting you're a good poker player i'm very good yes uh, I'm going to go with North Dakota. They love no. a good crepe there after the biker <laughs> rally. <laughs> Actually, it's Utah. Really? Yeah. They're kind of classy. Like these, yeah, those they got, they got pretty views, I guess. I don't know. They got, we, this is how much we know about the rest of our, our uh, country. Utah we, has pretty views and strange views on marriage. Yeah. That's right. That's that's all we know. <laughs> that's all we know. That's all we know. We like yeah. to reduce every state to a food and a strange principle. <laughs> <laughs> makes more sense than you realize. Hmm. Um, <laughs> well, that, was, that was interesting. That was fun. <laughs> we have a few other things we wanted to discuss before we got started. Yes. Here's one. Our last episode, Kevin had a headline about a cashew that sold on ebay right mm-hmm. that looked like nick cage right now this was a made-up headline made-up headline and if you haven't caught up go back listen surprise that's a fake headline now since then we have seen nicholas cage 
in a thousand different ways. Like he has not <laughs> been around. Like he's, you know, he's always around. He's always around. Let's be honest. He's always, he's around. always around. He's always with you. But we have seen him in so many different things. Like it, it popped up. Um, I don't know, something something kind of random, just like a random meme or something. It started out small. And then yeah. today we saw these things where it was like, Nicolas Cage is going to be playing so-and-so from Tiger King. And we yeah. were like, what is happening? <laughs> I th- well, I think Nick Cage, there's like a... a, a uh a uh, not a subgenre. There is a uh, there's a cult of Nick Cage out there. Where there's lots of Nick Cage related memes and things. I want to see the cult of Nick Cage <laughs> as a T-shirt. <laughs> the cult of Cage. <laughs> that was my Nicolas Cage impression. I don't, that was don't, pretty good. It was decent. Yeah, thanks, thanks. Uh, yeah, he's going to be the the Tiger King guy apparently in a in a scripted series based on that debacle. And. um Still probably not going to watch it. No, I'm not a big Nick Cage guy. I think we talked about this before. I'm just not. Uh, I'm not a. I'm not a big fan of animal abuse. Yeah, so you call me crazy. Put those two things together. I don't care what that map <laughs> says on the back of the Constitution. I'm not watching it. <laughs> yeah, but I just thought that was so crazy. Yeah, yeah. Like you, you came up with that, and it was like the last two weeks. It's just been like flooded with yeah. Nicolas Cage for some reason. And I was like, that's so weird. You know how you like you know how you're when you're talking to somebody, and then like you look at your phone. And you're scrolling through Facebook and like the first ad you see is what you just talked about. Mm-hmm. I feel like we're doing that in life right now. You and I with our conversations, we're, we're willing things into creation. Nicholas, we're bringing Nicholas Cage back where we're, we're uh, well, that's one example. <laughs> 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 uh, the one major one we're still working on is uh, becoming millionaires. Big bag of free money. Big bags of free money. <laughs> that should be the name of this episode. Big bags of free money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that'll get everyone's attention. Uh, another thing that this has been a, a really important last couple of weeks. Big news. Uh, you know, Nicholas Cage career on the rise and then followed up with uh uh aliens yeah ufos apparently apparently do exist yeah these ufos have been they're like yes those let's take your uh attention off of the horribleness of everything else guess what aliens (laughs) does that give you hope (laughs) and it does thank you it it just i think (laughs) it just puts a fine point on how completely fucked up the world is right now that the Guy from Blink-182 could say, hey, I got these UFO videos a year ago. And we're like, oh, sure thing, Tom. And then a year Thanks later... Thanks for those. It's like, well, sure, whatever. And then a year later, the Pentagon's like, yeah, that guy from Blink-182, he was telling the truth. Those videos are real. And the world is so shitty right now that it just was a news story for 10 minutes. <laughs> and <laughs> Didn't well, even matter. It's like, oh, this should be the top story of the world right now. There's it's the- It's like you were just throwing loose change when you need, like... <laughs> a five <laughs> you know yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so the uh, there's two videos uh out there or three there's three short clips out there making the rounds of um footage that w- had been leaked about a year ago and the pentagon uh, came forward and said that yes those are three examples of unexplained aerial phenomenon or ufo related blah 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 whatever the term is and uh yeah they don't know what the hell that is and uh, and then the president recently also said that pilots also see weird stuff all the time or something of that nature so just adding more fuel to the fire of all the stuff that we've thought was happening mm-hmm. and uh sure enough there's a glimmer that yeah we some there's some stuff we still really don't know we aren't alone yeah i don't know if it's comforting or more terrifying Unless, uh, unless they have a cure for like every problem we have. <laughs> <laughs> Coronavirus. We had that three billion years ago in our world. Yeah. <laughs> Just smoke this vape pen. You'll be healed of everything. <laughs> I knew it was vape pen. I knew vape would save us. I knew it. Uh, in other news, uh, as if things can get worse, um, the U.S. now has murder hornets. Yeah. So that is new didn't know that was a thing that existed in the world but somehow now they exist yeah. in our country they've uh, they've been around killing not in mass uh, quantities but now they've infl- they've uh, made their way to the u.s and our rbs don't know how to defend themselves against them because it's a <laughs> new uh sorry <laughs> <laughs> When you said our bees, all I could imagine was Arby's, like the restaurant. <laughs> we have the bees. <laughs> <laughs> 
is my brain is so visual that I just like <laughs> I see like the word and then that's what I <laughs> and now a special message from Arby's folks k- killer hornets are out there but one thing that will protect you this summer is a dash of horsey sauce on your neck <laughs> stupid <laughs> um, <laughs> um yeah so that's fun and scary i guess babe what i'm trying to say is that if we did move to the land of where everything can possibly kill you like australia australia i love you and you look absolutely stunning <laughs> <laughs> but everything looks so scary. You have big spiders and things that can kill you so easily. And you're also pretty. It's very clear that Darwinism has taken over over there. <laughs> and super pretty and could kill you. That That's like uh, Ronda Rousey or something. Like the country. <laughs> <laughs> if Ronda Rousey were a country, it would be Australia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right <laughs> or like uh it's like the rock and ronda rousey had a country <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> but i also imagine everybody in australia is like super handsome and super pretty yeah like they're just like supermodel <laughs> it's like a supermodel assembly line on the island and then a helicopter comes in and grabs a few and drops them off in another country <laughs> i know here you go <laughs> uh we'll visit you one day <laughs> if you'll accept us <laughs> Anyway, so it's been a big couple of weeks. Yeah, a lot's happened. So lot's we, happened. We wanted to talk about that stuff off the top. and uh, So this is Fake Headlines Podcast. You oh, guys. you're still listening. Thank yes, you. thank you. And uh, now we're in hour four of tonight's episode. Um, <laughs> We uh, th- what we've done is we've uh, we've gone on the the internet. We found a strange headline, a wacky headline that that tickled us, and then we also made up a strange headline or two of them actually. So we now have three headlines in our pockets each, and we will present the three headlines to one another. But only one story is real, and we're going to try to guess which one it is. And we don't know any of the stories ahead of time. We don't know what we're going to be talking about. We're going to talk about the headlines and see where the conversation goes. Sound like fun? Sounds like the best. I'm asking you directly. Does it sound like fun? It sounds like fun. <laughs> it sounds like fun. It does. It yeah. Does. So I believe, Tiffany, I think you're going first this week if I'm That's mistaken, right. right? Yes. Yes, yes, okay. yes. So let me grab my notebook here. How exciting. Also, if you guys aren't following along, Kevin has a beard now. <laughs> yes, that has been a, it's been an interesting six weeks. Yeah. Uh, I have uh, grown a full beard and then uh, trimmed it down this weekend. I bought some uh, beard butter and beard oil to take care of it. Because He's like real like manly. Getting into, into it. it. I'm yeah. buying accessories now. Like I'm, I feel like I'm a real, it's like my hobby. I'm buying, I'm buying accessories. I'm reading about it. Like it's taking up a lot of my time. Yeah. Can I mention one more thing? Sure. To congratulate you. That you are on like week seven yeah, this of was, not smoking. This will be week seven. Yeah. We're going on almost two months of not smoking cigarettes. I know. It's amazing. I'm so proud of you, Lovey. Holy shit. Guys, look, I'm no preacher, man. I'm no <laughs> I'm no hero. But I will say that I have smoked for since I was 15. And I am in my late 60s right now. So, <laughs> so you do the math. You figure out the math at home. <laughs> Um, I've smoked a lot of cigarettes in my life to the point where I didn't think I'd ever quit. And I thought I would just, that would be the thing I would do until I died. And I, and I thought it would be the thing that would kill me to be quite frank, but I have not had a cigarette for seven full weeks now. And I tell you, I am super proud of myself. I'm a hero. Uh, I want all of your congratulatory statements. Uh, but no, I say this to say, to tell you that if you are someone who smokes and you want to quit, it is entirely possible. It is not impossible for me nicotine lozenges have helped quite a bit thank you mark Marin. i don't know him personally he just talks about it uh <laughs> but uh, so i would find something like that that can help you go cold turkey do whatever you got to do but i tell you i don't feel like i've i don't feel like i'm eating more i don't feel like i'm losing my cool more because i'm not smoking the nicotine's helping of course But um, it is entirely possible. So think about it. You don't have to. When you're ready to quit, know that you can do it. That's all I want to say. Yeah. And you can live your life. You want to keep smoking? That's fine. Because I know how much fun it is and I enjoyed it a thousand percent. (laughs) It made me look super cool and I felt cool doing it. (laughs) And it made me feel good. But I'm telling you, you can can do it. Because like I said, I smoked a hundred thousand cigarettes in my life <laughs> and it's great yeah it's so great i'm so proud of you lovey thank you i appreciate that thank yeah. you for your support yeah and it's uh yeah and i'm sorry that you had to put up with all of my stinky breath for the last couple of years 
<laughs> I love you. I love you. I, n- I never thought you smelled bad. And although my breath is now 100% more fresh, my farts are a lot worse. I'm so sorry. Get out of here. I don't know what's going on. You double up on the pants and that's how we deal with it. <laughs> double up on the pants. Put on your charcoal pants. <laughs> charcoal filtered pants for farts. <laughs> fart pants. Brought to you by Fake Headlines Podcast. <laughs> Fake Headlines Podcast. Use offer code fart pants for 10% off now <laughs> at fartpants.org. <laughs> Uh, Kevin. Yes. Oh, yes. We're going back are to you, the show. Are you ready for my three headlines? <laughs> I this is so ridiculous. <laughs> yes, Tiffany, hit me with those headlines. Okay. Headline number one. Employee saves boss's life with Heimlich via Zoom. <laughs> really? Employee saves boss's life with Heimlich via Zoom. Heimlich via Zoom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Headline number two. Okay. Desperate mother leaves note for family and hides in the attic. Desperate mother leaves note for the family, hides in the attic. Oh my god. I've done this before. <laughs> we'll talk about it. Okay. <laughs> Headline number three. Aquarium asks you to FaceTime their eels so they don't forget humans during the lockdown. Say that again. Aquarium asks you to FaceTime their eels so they don't forget humans during lockdown. FaceTime their eels. Yeah. So they don't forget humans. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> well, these are great. <laughs> <laughs> this is so weird. Yep. Okay. <laughs> so headline number one, this is what we'll do. We'll start with the first one as we normally would uh, if you're into chronology. Uh, employee saves <laughs> boss's life with a Heimlich maneuver via Zoom. Yeah. I w- Was the Zoom background like a uh, one of the posters, the choking hazard posters? Yeah. The virtual background? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Quick, boss, look at the screen. <laughs> look at the screen. Just look behind me. Look, I'm going to duck down. You follow these directions. You've probably seen them in public spaces before. I'll talk you through it. It's fine. We can do this. <laughs> How do you Heimlich yourself? <laughs> I don't know if my leg can bend that way. Ayo. It's probably best if you start out Heimlicking yourself and then going on to someone else. <laughs> so you know how it feels. I'm sorry. Did you say Heimlich or hind lick? Because I think I've been doing this very wrong and I'm very sorry, sir. I thought you were choking. <laughs> oh, shit. I, th- um, I think you Heim- Heimlich yourself. <laughs> I, it's one it's we're to the point where we've said it so many times that it just sounds weird <laughs> right like it it's does. it's not someone's Heimlich. name it's Heimlich. yeah it's <laughs> just nonsense um i i think that you have to um throw yourself over a chair yeah that's right don't I, you? I, yes i do believe from my uh my uh safety training <laughs> I feel like I learned this somewhere. Have you had some safety training? Well, we I think we had um, like Red f- First Aid, Red Cross. I think the Red Cross came to a job I had once and did like a safety training type thing. Oh, wow. For people. Why doesn't our current office have that? I That's feel like a good they question. should. Yeah, I know. You, I think... I think there is concern, and I'm not saying this is our company at all. I'm, I'm just saying I think, in general, there may be concern with like liabilities and stuff like that. Oh, that with, makes sense. With, yeah. Um, so some places maybe don't want people to get involved, maybe. But um, at the place I'm talking about, which was uh, several jobs ago, um, for anybody that was uh, a supervisor or a manager, had to go through and be certified in CPR. That seems like it would make sense to mm-hmm. have, uh, you know, some at least yeah. one authoritative figure in the office to, yeah, to the, have a little bit of knowledge about that right. first aid. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, for so for many years, I was uh, I was uh, CPR certified. Wow. This was before. Um, this is before the. Was it the, what song do they want you to sing while you're doing the compressions? Staying alive. Staying alive. Yeah. 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 Uh, back then, we were doing. Um, Hi ho, hi ho! It's off to work. Yeah, we it was go. all those the wrong rhythm. Yeah, we were doing rhythm as a dancer. It was way too much. It was too fast. Rhythm, 
Rhythm. <laughs> Rhythm is a dancer. You can do it now. Oh, do, 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 do. Breathe in the air. <laughs> what is air? Baby, please breathe it. Please breathe it. Oh, oh no. yeah. <laughs> Clearly, I'm the optimistic one. Yeah, we <laughs> we, uh, we were not successful with those songs. <laughs> um, yeah, so it was a long time ago. And, uh, but yeah, I think currently, I don't think we do have that where we work, that they offer that. No. That probably would be a good idea. Or even having one of those um, uh, machines that if somebody's having a heart attack, they can do the... I feel like they probably do have those. Those things you can strap on. Because it'll, it'll like walk you through. Like the, It's like a box. And like, oh, okay. when you open it up... It's like uh, the, there's a voice that will then tell you, like, put the put one of the things here and then put one of the things there and now yeah. step back. And like it tells you how to, like, you know, apply the device and then give someone a, a little shock there to get their heart going again, which is wow. amazing. Yeah. Um, but back to our silly story. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a little, little heavy here. Ooh. Oh, boy. Yikes. Um, Heimlich. I think the Heimlich does involve, like, I believe it's like if it was like a chair you'd be sitting on at work, I believe it's like you would you would have the top of the chair, like, you know, the the back. Yeah. You would kind of get that to press in be- just below your yeah. rib cage, I think. Yeah. And kind of force whatever food is happening. That's really oh. scary to, to be at home and then, like, not have someone there to assist you if you're choking at something. Yeah. That's awful. I, uh, as a kid, I choked a couple times and my dad saved my life on, uh, Oh my gosh. My grandma had, uh, always had a jar of candy as grandmas often do. And, uh, you look, need to chew your food before you swallow, son. I know. Well, you know, you've seen me eat. I'm I, not good at it. I'm a bit of a, <laughs> I'm not good. I'm not good at it. <laughs> I'm a bit of a, I'm a bit of a wild uh, recluse when it comes to eating and just a real, ro- go real rogue. Yeah, you've seen me eat popcorn. It's just a mouthful, shove it right in. It's like the <laughs> It's like he's slapping himself in the face, but also it's like in slow motion. It's yeah, that's a, yeah, that's exactly it. <laughs> yeah. It's also like he's trying to quiet himself <laughs> with food. Yeah. I quiet the well, I do quiet the inner voices with food. <laughs> but your dad saved your life? Yeah, I choked on uh some hard candy twice and he was oh, able man. to he was able to i think he reached into my mouth dang I think he like sc- the, like a little scoop scooped thing. it in yeah. wow yep that's crazy so that that is one of the reasons why when it comes to candy i chew it right away because i um, i all every time i have candy i think about choking on it oh so to this day if i put like a heart like a like i'm very scared of jolly ranchers yeah like I, I'm a man in my sixties. No, you don't eat Jolly Ranchers. I'll, I'll will, but I, keep, I try to keep them like tucked under my lip, like I'm, like I'm dipping tobacco, <laughs> because I don't want it to f- fall down my throat. You're gonna get cavities. I know. Or I'll, t- or if I do have a piece of hard candy, I chew it up right away and, and disperse it evenly amongst my tongue. Yeah. And then let it dissolve, like. <laughs> uh huh. I'm so strange when I say this a lot. <laughs> Oh man, I'm a freak. <laughs> but yeah, this happened 40 years ago, and I still think of it. Yeah, every time you were in your candy. 20s, and your dad saved your life. Yeah, but I was in my 20s. Tw- I was I was home from college <laughs> at grandma's, uh, eating some hard candy. <laughs> my dad oh. said, "Son, I got to drive you back to school. It is uh, 1975, <laughs> and uh, we need to get you back to school right away." <laughs> I like to imagine people actually thinking that you're in your 60s. So, just a disclaimer. <laughs> I do have a lot of white in this uh, beard, so I, I might be able to pass for a for a young sixty. <laughs> a real silver fox. Oh, let's. Uh, you definitely do not look like you're in your sixties. No, you look great for your age. Thank you. I feel that yeah. way because I have seen some photos of. Uh, well, uh, I know people I went to school with probably listen to this. It's not you guys. You guys look great. You look <laughs> wonderful. It's, it's not you guys. So don't think it's you. <laughs> But there are people that I have found out r- sort of recently that I am older than, and it blew my mind at how time has been unfair. <laughs> I mean, you did smoke for 50 I did, years. I did smoke for 50 years. I ate nothing but hard candy all through college until <laughs> dad saved my life. And now and, you have uh, all your teeth. But doesn't that, but I think everybody goes through that, right? Where you think you, you find out someone's age and you think, my God, do I look that old? And then you're like, no. Nope. Oh, God, I'm blessed right now. Hashtag, okay. hashtag oil of Olay. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, that's crazy. Uh, the FaceTime or the fa- or any of that kind of stuff. I mean, that's that's wonderful that that technology could help save a life. Ha- having to talk through, having to talk someone through that, keeping them calm while they're alone, and then having to to say like, "All right, you need to do this. You need to listen to me and to do this." Yeah. Um, well, they, they did work at a 911 call center, though, so they should have known these kinds of things. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> they Zoom now. <laughs> they, um, <laughs> uh, I, I, don't, I don't know if, if I should say this or not, but... We can cut it out, maybe. I really, I really hope that the boss learned their lesson about having a meeting and eating at the same time. How dare they? No one wants to watch them eat. Ugh, you're right. That is kind of gross. Or hear them eat. That's the thing, too. Wait till it's done. Yeah. But maybe it was a hard candy. That could be. Maybe they were enjoying a Werther's Original. Who knows? Oh, I love the Werther's. You See, don't know. Now that's a candy I chew up right away because I'm afraid I'm going to swallow that juicy Werther. That upsets my gums. Because I just imagine it getting stuck in my teeth. Yeah, yeah I know. I know. I hate it. But and then I just think about cavities happening, and then I'm like, oh, no. That's true. What if it pulls out my fillings? That has happened to me. But actually, you know what? I was on a, um, I was on an airplane once chewing gum. I think I was going to a wedding. It was before I met you. And uh, I was flying solo, and I remember biting into a piece of gum and, like, hearing a crack. And, like, gum just screwed up a filling. Oh, God. On a plane. Gross. So I had to go the whole trip oh. with that happening. I'm upset. Ugh, gross. But anyway, I Any hope this up. boss learns her lesson about uh, eating and trying to like rush and hurry up and eat that really quick. Well, it is called Zoom. It is. It is. Zoom. Fast. <laughs> so stupid. I follow along. I know you did. Um, and uh, I, don't, I don't think they just should do it. I think you're correct. But I think it's great that that employee was able to assist. And I hope that they get a big fat raise. I do too. And I hope maybe they get get to like leave early on Friday or something. Yeah. Is there a little extra time? Yeah, a little extra time. Yeah. Have you ever given anybody like the Heimlich maneuver or CPR or anything like that? Mm-mm. I've never been certified or anything Me like either. that. I also don't like touching people, so... <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I laugh, but I, I, don't, I don't. She likes touching me, folks. Okay. Yeah, I'm into it. Just not strangers. I love hugs. I hate handshakes. Yeah. Although that's all going to go. They're right all now. gone now. Yeah. Now you'll never touch me. <laughs> Just my husband. Thank you. You don't get to touch my husband. I do. He's the only one who's touching me. That's what I'm trying We're to gonna say. We're going to touch each Let's other. Let's move on. Let's touch each other right now. We'll be right back after these commercial messages. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, headline number two, Kevin. Yes. What was headline number two again? That had to do with a desperate mother leaving a note for her family and then hiding in the attic. Yeah. What is she so desperate about? Just needs to get away from the kids? Getting the fuck away. Uh, now I said I related to this because I remember yeah, when, rude. when I was a kid, I, uh, you know, that doesn't matter, but my, you ever run away as a kid? You have. <laughs> We'll talk about that. Um, I, when I was a kid, I left a note saying I was running away and then I hid in the hamper. I can't imagine what that did to your parents. I think they knew that I, they immediately knew that it was not real because I do not remember there being any concern at all. (laughs) They're like, all right, Kevin's in the hamper. Right. They could probably hear my heavy breathing in the hamper. (laughs) They probably saw the smoke billowing out. (laughs) They did. (laughs) <laughs> Again, I was in my 20s He's at home smoking from a cigarette, <laughs> hiding in a hamper. <laughs> I'll show you guys some out of here. I ain't doing no chores. i smoke. That's how I talked when I was a kid. I know. I'm really glad you outgrew your accent. I did. I really did. I yeah. outgrew it. Um, yeah, I don't know why I did that. I thought it was, for some reason, I thought that was hilarious. I thought that would be a funny prank to pull on my parents. They did not care. <laughs> uh, to be fair, you have great parents. That's true. And they knew that this could not be true. And they did not take it seriously at all. But you you ran away once, didn't you? You <laughs> rode your bike across town. Across town. I don't know. I'm gonna you know I'm gonna use Google Maps <laughs> and see if I can figure out how many miles it was. Really? But yeah, I definitely I rode my bike 
to my best friend's house. Because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to take it anymore. Aww. Okay, so let's see. You should you should just lit a cigarette Point and climb a. in a hamper. I should. <laughs> I probably should have. <laughs> I would have been the only one getting into that hamper because I was the only one who did laundry. So. <laughs> oh, that's why. You, that's why you left. <laughs> yeah. I'm tired of these this work. I'm over it. I'm out of here. <laughs> um, it was probably <laughs> it was probably a little over eight miles. Eight miles. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> My you rode your bike eight miles. Yeah, it must have taken me about an hour to get there. Holy cow! And then you, you just were... by looking at this map, it says it's it's about um, six point eight miles. But I was a little bit further out of the town that I'm using, so I I suspect it was probably about eight miles. How old were you? Do you think? Mm, let's see, because I was still living there. I was probably eleven or twelve. Wow. Yeah. Eight mi- and then you got to ride home, right? You didn't ride your bike Ugh, home? She was so mad. <laughs> I, yeah, my mother came and picked me up. She was angry. <laughs> oh, imagine that. <laughs> uh, my, but my best friend's mom was like, why do all these kids run away to my house? I don't understand. <laughs> were there other kids there at the same time that were running away? Well, I suspect that there were other kids who ran away to her house that were friends with her kids. No, I mean, but not at the same time. Like, no, no, not at the same time. She didn't run an orphanage or you anything. Did. She wasn't like, <laughs> I just imagine a bunch she wasn't of like old mother goose or didn't live in a shoe or anything, but <laughs> just, it's basically, that's what I imagine. I imagine you with a big stick with all your belongings in a kerchief and all these other kids yeah. are the same. And oh, yeah. a giant, you're all like waiting to get into a giant shoe and there's like a, like a line, like a velvet <laughs> rope. <laughs> and it's like a bouncer. <laughs> Sorry, we can't. We got. <laughs> we got to wait for someone to leave first. <laughs> we're at capacity right now in the sh- in the heel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I ran away from home. I was <laughs> for one night. I would imagine that uh, I'm not a parent, and uh, I don't plan to be. <laughs> well, thank goodness. <laughs> and uh, I would imagine that right now, if you had to work, live, take care of your family. And teach your kids, I think I would run away at this point. Yeah. That's a lot of jobs to have for one person to do. so much work. That's crazy. It seems like there's a lot of stereotypes that surround, um, uh, uh, like a, uh, female male relationship with kids where like the, the dad will, you know, he'll do like all the fun stuff and Mm -hmm. mom is always the bad guy. And that's just like the stereotype that uh, is as I understand it. And I, I, maybe that's why I've never, uh, imagined myself as a mother because I'm such an independent person that I'm just like, I can't deal with having to tell someone else that they need to do this all the time or that they need to rely on me all the time or that they like, there's no escape or that they destroy your vagina entirely. I just don't, I, that none of that's appealing to me. Like, (laughs) I like everything where it is, including my stuff and my vagina parts. So (laughs) I think I would run away from home too, even if it was just to escape in the attic and everyone thinks that I abandoned them. I don't know. Maybe I'd want to see how they survive without me. (laughs) Up until you said destroy my vagina parts, a lot of that anger, I could see why you get mad at me sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, you don't like it when you have to think that I'm you're in charge of me. <laughs> you get very mad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we had a we had a real breakthrough. We're gonna save eighty bucks on therapy this week. <laughs> <laughs> Dear therapist, listen to this part of our episode. You'll be very proud. <laughs> Love the vagina destroyers. <laughs> that would be a really uh excellent um superhero name, babe. Vagina destroyers, yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> it's also a tag team on glow <laughs> i'm wearing a glow t-shirt that's too. why i said that <laughs> <laughs> today's may the 4th but i got up this morning i was like i want to wear my glow shirt i want to feel like a cool lady and then kevin's like oh it's may the 4th and i was like i'm committed mm. <laughs> to my wardrobe choice <laughs> I'm wearing, while i work from home <laughs> <laughs> i'm wearing a millennium falcon shirt but this i wear these every day just <laughs> i uh I like Star Wars. It's fine. Like, I'm a big fan, but uh, not a n- super nerd about it. Like, I don't know a lot of the lore. Like, I was a kid in the 80s, so you watch Star Wars and you're a big fan of Star Wars. Yeah. Like, I don't have any costumes or anything. I don't know a lot of stuff. However, Kevin had enough t-shirts that on his 40th birthday, I snuck away... 20 years ago. I snuck away at least five t-shirts and from his drawers... Because I knew he had like 20 more Star Wars t-shirts in his t-shirt drawers. Stuffed them away into a bag, took them with us on vacation, and then surprised him, uh, myself and our friends, uh, surprised him for his 40th birthday f- with a Star Wars themed birthday. <laughs> All wearing my shirts. All wearing his shirts. That I was oblivious <laughs> to. I was like, hey, that's my shirt, isn't it? <laughs> I have I have more Star Wars shirts than I should for my level of current <laughs> fandom. To be fair, you didn't buy any of them. No, they're you've it's just a, received them. It's all. a common gift every yeah. year, Star, which is fine. I'm not complaining. Complain. I just feel bad because I recently, in the last few years, realized I'm not as big of a Star Wars fan as I thought I was. That's because okay. I don't know enough. I don't know enough. Yeah, I'm like a mainstream fan. Like you're like a normal fan, not a crazy fan. Yeah, yeah. Like I like it. I mean, I was a kid in the '80s. You had to have liked it. There wasn't a lot of choices then. Yeah. Not to say it's not a bad choice, but it's just different now. I think you know what I mean. Like it's just different. You can't be a nerd spurt on everything. Right. Exactly. I don't know. Like I love Boba Fett when I was a kid. I don't know the whole. I didn't know the whole man. I didn't know he was a Mandalorian. I didn't know what that meant. Right. Until I saw the show. I yeah. just had. I just liked the action figure. He was cool. He had a jet pack yeah that's that was it yeah (laughs) (laughs) listen to kevin try not to sound like a total dork he (laughs) look i'm a freaking nerd i get like i'm not trying to sound like cool guy i'm just letting you know how it is (laughs) (laughs) these are the facts (laughs) you want to know a lot about 90s japanese wrestling i can talk to you about that too (laughs) (laughs) and also (laughs) hip-hop yes uh kevin if you if you could run away to a spot in the house and just like spy on your family would you do it like would you run away and just hide in the attic like this mom did i mean maybe she didn't spy maybe she just went up there because she was like fuck this maybe it's like that episode of the office where they turn that room into like a little dance bar yeah maybe it's like that like a fun getaway or like the the secret bathroom in Brooklyn Nine Nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I could see something like that happen. She's got like a she's got like a Keurig up there, some books. Yeah, maybe uh, an iPad. Yeah, it it seems like it seems like a lot of moms like they don't like once they have kids, they don't have their space anymore. Like mm-hmm. I find that to be true even with my cat. Like I can't <laughs> pee without my cat watching me. And she's laying on your head right now. We can't be intimate without our cat watching us. <laughs> that's just, And that's just yep. something you have to get over. If you live in a loft and you don't have a door, them's the brakes. You're going to make eye contact like, <laughs> with a cat while you're making passionate love. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> and you're just like, all right. All right. <laughs> I'm going to stare into your eyes. <laughs> and then she cleans herself. I don't know. I, <laughs> she should feel dirty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually licking myself afterwards Get too. I feel your Heimlich. My Heimlich. <laughs> I <laughs> Heimlich. Wait a minute. Get out of here. Come on. You shouldn't have that. Knock it off. I'm not saying it was mine. Ew. Get out of here. <laughs> okay. So, um, do you, do, do would you would you relate to like having this oh, like God, secret yes. little space just yeah, to get away? Absolutely, I would love to get away from everybody all the time. I don't I don't want to be around people. It's like that idea too of like um, this is why people have man caves <laughs> and, or kids having tree houses. Tree houses, like kids would have tree houses so they can get away from their parents right. and like go and have like a secret little area that's just their own. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think kids have that adults have like the the she sheds or the 
man caves and oh whatever. i hate those phrases so I much know. but i know but but you get the idea though yeah. these little getaway areas or a crafting room or some some place to get away from and for sure and not focus on these little f- things <laughs> 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 these little uterus goblins i can relate to that because look we say that we <laughs> look <funny>. we're <laughs> uterus goblins Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hello. have a maternal instinct, sure. <laughs> oh, hello. How old is your uterus goblin? <laughs> How many months is that little uterus goblin now? <laughs> oh, gosh. Just precious. <laughs> You're still counting in months? <laughs> <laughs> I go with weeks. <laughs> Does the baby always smell like brimstone? <laughs> well, is that me? Is that me? I don't know. Do you uh, prefer the sulfur scent? All right. <laughs> hmm. Yes. Uh, would, uh, I, we say all this because we are just not, that's just not who we are. As we're not parents. <laughs> and that's okay. We support the people who are. Exactly. And, and we're saying that we would uh, completely understand and respect your need to get away because I cannot imagine... Cannot imagine what it's like. And kudos to you <laughs> for making that choice and for doing what you're doing. I'm going to be over here doing what I'm doing, which is absolutely fucking nothing. And everything I want. And whatever I want to do next. Mostly nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so take that. <laughs> All right. So Tiffany, headline number three, Aquarium asks you... To FaceTime their eels so that they don't forget humans? During lockdown, During yeah. lockdown. Yeah. So wh- why is it bad that eels forget what humans look like? Like, what's the deal? When all animals get lonely? Yeah, but eels are disgusting. They don't, they don't deserve attention. Why? Because they're like skinny water snakes? Yes, exactly. I don't like... Eels need love, too. <sighs> That's fair. It's just like... They're just like dancing a live seaweed. No, they're gross. They're they're like like snakes. Around and they're, like, they're like snakes and therefore they're evil and I don't like them. They move around in the water. They're like, ew. <laughs> ew. More like, ew. I'd rather have a uterus goblin. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe they're, um, maybe they're a kind of animal that, uh, get, easily scared by okay. anything um including humans maybe it took a long time for these particular attraction at the zoo to to get used to humans watching them that could be okay and they don't want to undo all that good work yeah all that good human training they were doing yeah so okay yeah so do the eels have their own uh like iphones or do, how does that work with the yeah in they like waterproof cases yeah they're they're in waterproof cases um they use a stylus um to unlock and and uh you know maybe uh tap into different meetings and facetimes um so that they can um you know have full control you know they don't want to forget humans and they don't want to forget their skills that they've learned and that which includes using an iphone so All right you know you know how eels move through the water? They really zoom through. Oh, you. Stupid, stupid. Yeah. I like that. It feels like this is like a, like a, I feel like I've heard a similar, st- not similar stories, but it, there's definitely been a thing since the world has been locked down where we are doing things to kind of keep animals engaged as best we can. Like there was that one, zoo or aquarium that was letting penguins walk around and look at the things <laughs> yeah that's right like, and you had the article last week about the goats on uh zoom yeah which is different but it, mm-hmm. it, there's a lot of animal um a lack of animal contact right now that i think is we're trying to facilitate uh, as best we can yeah because like you said there's uh there's going to be a lot of less uh, human interaction at uh, zoos and aquariums and whatnot and they do i mean there is a a relationship there like animals have a relationship with humans and whether it's based on the fact that they rely on humans to feed them Mm -hmm. shelter them give them water or if it's just a a companionship Mm -hmm. 
and maybe that companionship comes in different forms. Maybe it comes in, in the form of, you know, being a visitor at the zoo or a visitor at an aquarium or, you know, they live with us. Yeah. And maybe, maybe the eel, I'm trying to think of white eels in, in particular, because like of all the animals in the zoo or the aquarium, why the eels in particular, are they, they need this additional support right now. Mm-hmm. I don't know anything about eels other than I don't like them because they are water snakes. <laughs> which are different from regular water snakes. <laughs> which there's, I There's a, such a thing as a water snake? You don't remember seeing that at the park last summer? I oh, took a video of you and I was like, oh look, there's a snake and you you were not into it. You I were blocked that out. Welcome back. I had blocked that memory out. <laughs> I was oh. like, oh, look at the snakes swim in the water. And you were like, ooh, this is disgusting. I'm going to go stand over here. <laughs> I did. I stood so far away. <laughs> I was very socially distant back then to that snake. And I would do it today in a heartbeat. And that snake just smugly swam away like fun. And I'll just go over here with my little cute tail. No, get out of here, grossy. <laughs> so why would eels and what do eels do at the aquarium there i mean other other than they're they're not meant to be fed to other animals right they're a part of the tapestry of animals to, for people to watch right yeah i i hear they have open mics sometimes and they tell jokes <laughs> they do I got what you're going for. You remember that meme? Nature's jokesters, the yeah. eel. Yeah, I do forget about that. There was a that. meme that went around the internet for a while, and it looked like a an eel looks like it was just thrown a punchline. It yeah, was just waiting yeah. for someone to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Nature's and nothing prankster. tickled me more until that stupid husky came along, and then you have that husky <laughs> that tells stupid jokes. <laughs> Guys, come on. That's that's your thing, animals and jokes. Oh my god, it kills your me. Two favorite. They're so fun. So me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a simpleton. You're not a simpleton. <laughs> I don't think I could. I was thinking about, uh, like, I feel like you would be a good zoo employee. I think you would enjoy that. Like, I think you, not so much working with eels in the aquarium, but I could see you being someone that would be good at making sure the animals got the proper amount of, like, socialization that they needed in the zoo. I probably would. You know, the the worst part about, like, I would be so good about, like, the physical labor of, uh, you know, cleaning up whatever poop or whatever, you know, cleaning cages, sure. whatever. That stuff doesn't bother me. Animal poo poo and pee pee. Yeah. It's okay to say it. We're adults. Uh, and feeding them and watering them, stuff like that. None of that bothers me. In And the interacting with the animals, that doesn't bother me. It's all the science stuff that I would not be good at. Like, I didn't inherit the ability to retain that sort of science information. Oh. Like I was not good at biology <laughs> mostly because I didn't want to dissect the frog or the deer heart. Oh, that's uh, so gross. <laughs> uh, I didn't either. And I couldn't remember anything from the periodic table. I just like <laughs> none of that stuff stuck with me. Did you? Yeah. And I think that you would also, I, and I feel this way about myself. It's like, I would love to be around animals more like it, like I could see my like I, I would be a vet. I would I wouldn't be a vet, but I would be like a good animal psychologist. <laughs> like I would help them. Like I really get into their heads, yeah. you know. Really make them think it through. <laughs> like tell me about your mother, the eel. <laughs> what was your, what's your relationship like with her? What's your what's your eel deal? <laughs> what's your eel deal? Yes, <laughs> yeah. Like I would not be good. Like I'm not good with. Uh, I can't even watch like a, a a fake medical show drama where they're in a hospital and there's somebody walks in bleeding. I get like, oh. But um, so I know in real life I could not be a doctor, and I know that when it comes to animals, I also could not do anything gross with an animal, which is good because yeah. You know. I, I don't think I could do any of the the surgical stuff either. Mm. I I've, I've definitely helped past pets and dog like cats and dogs have uh their babies before. Mm. I've had to like sit with them and Aww. keep them calm or like for <laughs> chase I've had to chase a cat when she had a kitten like kind of not completely out of oh, her yet no, and, like set really? her down and help her oh, and yeah. Jeez Louise. Like <laughs> you're like a what do you call that a uh, 
mom <laughs> no, like a, <laughs> her a, uterine goblin was trying to escape and I, I was like i don't know what to tell you cat and i'm like come back here not a what do you call that like a, a, a not a maiden what do you call that like a uh a, mm, a me nope not a that uh, mm, what do you call that uh nope not a mistress um um <laughs> A maitre d no that's not the right word <laughs> mc uh <laughs> a mother hen hen um what do you call that what's the word everybody at home is screaming. lama's class <laughs> <laughs> it's french a me a mall what do you call that a mammal a mammal a mammal <laughs> wrangler a mammal wrangler that's the yeah, term yeah 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 um i know our friend wanted to be one a maitre d um i can't remember what do you call it we gotta figure that it's out a, it's a the birth helper midwife is what i was thinking of a doula so the word we're looking for is doula or a midwife i think is what we're thinking of yes we had to look that up a doula is an assistant who provides physical as well as emotional support during childbirth doulas help women in a non-medical capacity well, i was a cat doula several a cat times doula <laughs> <laughs> cat, cat doula matata you know what they say <laughs> i just <laughs> <laughs> tiffany you you may not be a midwife but you are a full wife to me <laughs> thanks babe <laughs> <sighs> Yeah. So, eels. <laughs> Nature's clowns. <laughs> um, I don't know if I could help them give birth, but I'm willing to be their friend through some glass. Yeah. Like, hey, eel. Would, would you... Sw- well, I don't think eels... Can, can eels survive outside of water? No. I don't think so. I don't think they can. No. I was thinking, like, you know how you... Like, the, like having a snake around your neck. Maybe you could be in the water and it would, like, lay around your neck. Would you let that happen? No. Nope. I wouldn't either. Nope. No, thank you. Don't touch me. <laughs> Eel, I touch you. You don't touch me. Got it? <laughs> Get a, it? Get it? That was also my rules when I used to work the streets. <laughs> I'll touch you. You don't touch me. Got it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I still am trying to figure out why the eels would need attention. Maybe all the animals do, but maybe the, maybe eels need more attention because they somehow, if they come near the surface or and are okay with humans, it brings the other mammal marine life along with them or something. Yeah. There must be like a reason why them, why they're singled out. They're maybe. like the tiny little inconspicuous lookouts. Yeah. Yeah. They like pop their heads up and they're like, right. Right. And they give like the nose of the oh clear. Yeah. Yeah. Looking They're, around. Like I think it's, uh, I think we all remember learning uh, in American history that uh, eels were the first marine life to signal that the British were coming. Yeah. They were. Yeah. Yeah. And then that notified and the And then lighthouses. they sip some tea and watch it all go down. <laughs> all that tea was already in the harbor and they're like, fuck it. <laughs> Why let it go to waste? <laughs> sip, sip, sip. I feel fancy. <laughs> I don't know if that's the uh, sequence of events. I, I believe it is. Yeah. Uh-huh. Then the eel was like, sad, isn't it? <laughs> and that. <laughs> Use some chaps. <laughs> I'm the fish. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so Tiffany, you were trying to tell me that one of these headlines is a true story, a true headline. Yeah. Holy shit. I think, I feel like, uh, cause there's been a lot of, um, there's been a lot of social media prankery and whatnot happening lately as people have spent a lot of time at home. I could see the, I, I think the real story is the desperate mom hiding. Cause I think it made, I think it would make a, I could see like a story like that going viral and being something that people are talking about. So I'm going to go with headline number two as being the real story this week. Okay. Uh, Kevin, that is a fake headline. How dare you? How dare you be mad? I'm not mad at you. I really thought that was the one though. Yeah. Um, okay. Then let's go with the aquarium. 
aquarium asks you to FaceTime their eels. Yeah. What's the deal with eels? <laughs> uh, that is a real headline. That's the one. All right. These are very good. However, I hope that someone saves a life one day. Yeah, that is. That's good. <laughs> I like that's a good story. Uh, this is from a CBS affiliate. Okay. Aquarium asks you to FaceTime their eels so they don't forget humans during lockdown. A Japanese aquarium is asking people to FaceTime its collection of 300 spotted garden eels so they remain interactive with humans during COVID-19 lockdown. The the Sumida Aquarium says the eels have started to forget humans. They are burrowing themselves into the sand when staff pass their tank. That's a concern because it makes it hard for the staff to check on the eels' well-being. Oh, okay. The Guardian reports the eels are used to having humans stare back at them, but after this long break from visitors, the eels could start to see people as a threat when they return following the lockdown. You want to see a picture of an eel? Yeah. It's it's kind of cute. Oh, I don't think I'm going to like it, though. Oh, that's kind of cute, actually. See? Yeah. That's cute. I just imagine a big old gross thing. I think you saw The Little Mermaid and it changed your life. <laughs> I think you're right. The aquarium is holding a face show festival on uh well it already passed oh no there's still time uh the aquarium is holding a facetime show festival from sunday may 3rd to tuesday may 5th so we can do it if you want let's check it out uh where it will install ipads near the tank they hope people will call in via facetime from their apple devices to keep the eels familiar with humans and then it gives information on how to take part, but unfortunately, you won't hear it in time. Uh, the aquarium <laughs> asks... <laughs> Sorry. Maybe they'll do it again, which is exciting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the aquarium asks that calls can be limited to five minutes, so as many people as possible can take part. You can wave and show your face, but you're asked not to make loud noises, so consider muting your phone. Hmm, okay. And that's it. And international rate supply, probably? I don't know. No, FaceTime's probably free. It's right? it. It's... Um, it says uh, to dial in, open the FaceTime app and enter what e- one of the email addresses below. And cool. then um, it's set up next to the tank and then press video. That's awesome. We should try that. So I think that's pretty neat. Um, you don't really think about the the element of keeping the creatures that you're caring for interacted with humans because you, you need to be able to care for them. Right. Right. And you need to be able to actually see them. So if they go into hiding, it makes it a lot more difficult to make sure that their well being is, is where it should be. Cause you don't think about that. Like an eel it probably has a, a brain similar to like a goldfish where it's going to forget. Yeah. It might. You know, yeah. It's not like we're, uh, they're fully sentient There's no bond. beings. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Oh, interesting. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Nicely so, done. Short and sweet. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll be right back after these messages. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash fakeheadpod. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. That's www.audibletrial.com slash fakeheadpod. Okay, welcome back. Hey, uh, welcome back. Uh, so now, Tiffany, I'm going to present to you my three headlines All right. for this week. All right. Now, only one of these is real. Keep that in mind. Okay. All right, headline number one. Spotify reports shift in streamed music as parents expose kids to new tunes. Okay. Spotify. Reports shift in streamed music as parents expose kids to new tunes. about time headline number two spanish cops bust a man taking goldfish for a walk during lockdown (laughs) spanish cops bust a man taking goldfish for a walk during lockdown wow (laughs) and headline number three is your house haunted or are you spending too much time inside (laughs) reported Mm. hauntings up 300 (laughs) percent 300 percent yeah is your house haunted or are you spending too much time inside? Reported hauntings up 300%. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
that was my elbow cracking by the way wow that was very loud it was like a <laughs> stalk of celery snapped in half i know i'm suddenly i want peanut butter i could be you know what we could do with our recording equipment uh, to make some extra money is we could provide sound effects for movies i could just use my crackly joints for a myriad of sound effects and i'll do my killer impressions yeah so i think <laughs> it's time yeah yeah let's monetize this shit <laughs> Okay, so headline number one, Kevin. Uh, Spotify reports a shift in streaming music as parents introduce their kids to new new stuff. tunes. Yeah, so the the, the popular streams are, are changing. So, what do you think people are listening? to? What do you think kids are getting exposed to that maybe they didn't listen to before, and maybe it's catching on? I would assume parents are like what our age, my age. Probably. Something like that. So, uh, most definitely the Backstreet Boys. Like that's a classic, <laughs> right? Lots of there's a there's a fourth wave of ska happening right now. Yeah, they're finally understanding that meme that happens on social media when you know someone's mom cackles and it's Justin Timberlake and it's it's gonna be May, and like finally the kids are like, oh, I get it. It's because that song that they sing. Yeah, what is that? I don't understand that. What that is? Oh, because it's there's I think it's NSYNC. Where it sounds like it's Justin Timberlake. He's saying it's gonna be May, but it <laughs> it sounds like May uh, okay. rather than the word me. I've always been too afraid to ask what that was yeah. or figured out how to look it up. Yeah, it's I, I wasn't an NSYNC no girl, but I I know the song. Gotcha. No, I wasn't an NSYNC girl either. <laughs> <laughs> or, <laughs> yeah. When did that come? When was NSYNC? That was probably like what the early. It was the late nineties, early two thousands. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah, that was that day. Yeah, I don't really. I was a big. I'm a big fan of like n- like early to late '90s, I guess, alternative music. Mm-hmm. But then I don't know. Like as soon as like 2000 hit, like I lost touch with everything. <laughs> like I don't know what happened. Yeah. Like there's so many bands that have like like disturbed or like i don't know drowning pool all these weird bands that came out like i don't know that's a band yeah okay i saw them at wrestlemania (laughs) they were they were a special guest at the uh, wrestlemania in toronto where hulk hogan faced the rock (laughs) i was there and it was pretty cool nerd it was really awesome though i uh that was the loudest i'd ever crowd ever been a part of before (laughs) it was insane it was so loud it was so cool (laughs) um yeah, I and my music taste is pretty eclectic, and I think it's just because I I, I never had like a specific influence for music. Mm-hmm. Like my friends all listen to kind of different things, and like my best friend, you know, the home in which I ran away to, uh, she <laughs> she she was really into like you know pop bands and like Backstreet Boys and stuff like that. So when I was you know uh, you know becoming a teenager like around that age i thought that's what i was supposed to like so i was like oh i I guess i like the backstreet boys so that's what i listened to and then like i got into high school and like i had friends who listened to some pop stuff but like also i had friends who like my friend tanya really liked bush and i had a couple of cds so i was like oh i really like bush too i guess Mm -hmm. and um Um, but I also had experience listening to oldies music from my parents. And then, um, like my dad always really liked bluegrass music. So that's always been something that I've enjoyed. So like my music's all over the place. And then I got to college and I discovered how much I love the Beatles because neither of my parents listened to the Beatles. They just didn't like them. Interesting. So like I, it wasn't until I was like 18 that I was like, I really, wow, this is awesome. This is, (laughs) this is so much better than everything else. That's cool. Um, so like, yeah, my music is kind of all over the place. So I, I don't, I don't know what they would want to listen to. Cause I, I don't. And when I was a teenager too, um, like in my later teenager years, I listened to a lot of Christian rock music mm. and that was influenced by my brother. Cause mm-hmm. like I, he was like, here, listen to some of this stuff. And I was like, cool. I'm religious now. And, um, <laughs> so, so, so like I really got into like the newsboys and jars of clay, j- jars of clay who were not technically religious, but like they kind of were what but, a- like, they had that big song flood. So <laughs> that was a good song. That was, um, that was a big one. What about POD? Wasn't that a, a religious band? Uh, Do you remember that? I think they were kind of in the same classification as Creed. 
Oh yeah, is Creed a religious? They're not. They're they, not like a, they were mad about that, but I think yeah, I think Pod was kind of one. Like they're not like an overtly Christian band per se. Like they right. probably wouldn't. Uh, yeah, like they may have those beliefs, but they may not be someone that uh, would be like headlining like a christian rock festival or anything like, like kingdom that. bound or something yeah yeah but yeah. they might certainly identify with the, yeah. the scriptures and whatnot but not maybe yeah. not necessarily because i'm sure there's many mainstream artists that are christian or anything and they're not necessarily singing about it but they believe yeah. those beliefs and you may hear a little bit of that imagery in the song perhaps. yeah 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 um yeah so i had like I, I don't know my music has always been all over the place and like i mean even now i you know i'll listen to Billy Holiday or Ella Fitzgerald, yeah. and then a couple minutes later, I'm listening to Eminem. Or <laughs> yeah, you, you you're like the only person I know that like not, and I don't mean this in a bad way, but you have like um, you do have like a <laughs> like an eclectic taste where like, you'll you know a lot of Eminem like deep cut lyrics. <laughs> like you know more than just like the hits. Like you could like sing along with the Marshall Mathers LP. <laughs> like like. <laughs> Like, I don't even know what track nine is, but I'm guessing that no one knows what that is. But you, if I pl- press play on the CD and, and track nine, you, know, <laughs> you would be rapping along with it like you were Fred Durst. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he seems like a big Eminem fan. Actually, he'd be more like a He's Robert. really into Marshall. Be more of a Robert Durst. <laughs> <laughs> Die, bitch. Go to sleep. Go to sleep, bitch. Go ahead and close your eyes. Sing that song from Eight Mile as Robert Durst. <laughs> His palms are sweaty. These weak arms are heavy. His vomit on a sweater already. Mom's spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> He's nervous, but on the surface he looks calm and ready to drop bombs but he keeps forgetting what he wrote down the whole crowd goes so loud he opens his mouth but the words won't come out he's choking out everybody's joking now the clock's run out time's over (laughs) 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 snap back to reality oh the ghost gravity oh the ghost gravity choked oh he's so mad he won't (laughs) come up that easy nope (laughs) <laughs> okay. You better lose yourself in the music. The moment you own it, you better never let it go. You only got one shot. Not miss your chance to blow. This opportunity comes once in a lifetime. <laughs> I'm gonna sweat. I'm gonna sweat from laughing. Oh shit! I killed them. <laughs> I killed them all. <laughs> I killed it on that track. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! So music. So yeah. So Spotify of the youth. <laughs> Do you want to just move on to the next slide? Because I don't know. If we're never going to... Like, nothing's going to get funnier than that on that topic. All right. Headline number two. We'll move on to headline number two. <laughs> I don't even know where it is. I'm looking at the wrong notes. Oh, shit. Okay. Headline number two. Spanish cops bust man to taking goldfish for a walk during lockdown this is magnificent <laughs> <laughs> do you think that uh first of all do you think that the uh goldfish is wearing a medical mask yeah mm-hmm. do you think it is probably wearing a top hat and carrying a cane as well <laughs> do you think it likely. is likely maybe a snorkel mask yeah. maybe snorkel yeah do you think that it is... Uh, it's wearing a bell jar, but it's filled with water. <laughs> Inside a jar of yeah, water, yeah. yes. <laughs> do you think it's... Uh, do you think that it is... Uh, God, I really uh, should have put these in a different order. Um, <laughs> do, you, <laughs> do you think that the... Uh, do you think that the goldfish is on a leash? I like to imagine that. I like to imagine, like, you know, 
did you ever see like those gag leashes in and maybe like spencer's or something where it's a leash but nothing is connected yeah, to it so it looks like, like so an I, invisible dog yes thing, yeah. so i imagine it's one of those but like around the goldfish bowl so like that's how he's walking it because it's like holding it up <laughs> i like that I, also when you were saying that i thought of like the guys holding a goldfish bowl like a classic you know goldfish bowl not like an aquarium and he's got like a little string and the goldfish is zipping around but he's got he's got it on a string and it's in the water, like swirling around. Uh-huh. And he's holding onto it on a string the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, where's it going to go? Uh, I got a goldfish on a swing, string. I got, I, <laughs> Swinging around my finger. <laughs> he's stuck inside this tiny bowl, too. <laughs> this is a very musical episode. I love it. <laughs> Holy, f- I'm still sweating from that. <laughs> oh, my God. My face is sweaty, Mom Spaghetti. <laughs> um, do you think that uh, would it, would the mask go over the gills? Would it be like a goldfish? If a goldfish had to wear a mask to protect itself from coronavirus, mm-hmm. would it be two masks, one on each side of the face that would cover the gills? Is that how that would work? No, I think it would be like one big mask. The covering um, the mouth and gills, do you think? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 Yep. And then tie it around its its back fin. <laughs> it's got it's got to stay put somehow, right? It's, it has to, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's got to cover. It's got to cover the, all the breathing elements. <laughs> you don't want a mask on its face that looks like a, a crotchless panty. <laughs> right. That's <laughs> that's for you and your goldfish in the privacy of your own boudoir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I said boudoir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I said crotchless panty. <laughs> Yeah, I said Roger's Banny. And yeah, I said Boudoir. Yeah, I'm talking about a goldfish. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, do you, do you think this guy thought that his uh, his fish needed some sunshine? It needed a little vitamin D to yeah. go out, get maybe, some air? Yeah, maybe it didn't have... Uh, maybe he lives in a windowless apartment. Yeah. Uh, also known as basement. <laughs> and uh, that could be... Yeah, yeah. So I'm guessing that he was out uh, violating the quarantine. I'm assuming that was happening. I think it's okay to carry a goldfish yeah. loose in the street normally. Yeah. I don't think that had anything to do with it. I hope he had it in a bowl of some sort and it wasn't just like sloshing around in his sweaty hands. <laughs> He's got some a palm Germ of hands. water. Oh, uh, gross. Yeah. Or maybe the person had like a, maybe they had a glass Ma- coronavirus mask filled with water and there were like goldfish swirling around in it but how are they breathing not the fish the, the human because <laughs> <laughs> the man has to have his nose covered up too i was a, that's true i was you gotta keep your mouth closed that's a lot of concentration you have to hold your breath you walk so far and you're just like huffing and puffing it's a skill it really is i was imagining those like high those boots with the with the fish Fur. tank in them <laughs> <laughs> yes. Apple bottom jeans. Yes. Boots with the fur. Yeah. The the uh Uggs. He's over here standing at her. The Uggs, yes. Yes. No, I was imagining those uh those uh pimp shoes with like the aquarium in the bottom of them, but the 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 uh, COVID nineteen mask. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. I think it's kind of sweet. I think it's a nice gesture. It is. I mean, a man and his fish, you know, you can't keep them constrained. You yeah. know, you gotta, you gotta let them out. Do you think that, uh, do you, like, if you're walking a dog, you don't, the dog doesn't have to wear a, a, a mask, right? That's right. Pets don't wear masks during No, this. no. Although I did see a picture recently of the uh, Spanish flu epidemic and the, f- there's like a family portrait. With the cats, and right? There's a cat with a mask on. Yeah. And I thought, well, that was a hundred years ago. Like, how come we're not doing that now? That seems like something we still should be doing i'm more amazed that they had a cat cooperate where you could put a tiny mask on it because that's true uh we've both met our cat and she won't even wear a collar she's so badass she's like no one's labeling me 
and poses for a, and stay still long enough to pose for a picture. Yeah, we're lucky when that happens. Because then, back then, you had to stay still for a long time for a photograph to take, yeah. to take place. Yeah, we we catch it on luck. Yeah, but that's why we have a thousand photos of our cat every day on our phone because we're trying to <laughs> get that one get elusive, that perfect one. clear photo <laughs> that has not been uh, blurred by her rapid movements. Is this guy arrested because they they they're not supposed to be out of their house at all? Like he, he's not just going out for a walk. Like you and I can go out for a walk as long as we, you know, are socially distant or if we're going to the park and we know it's crowded, we have masks on. So Mm -hmm. if this guy is, um, out walking, he's not allowed to be outside at all. I think that could be because I think there are some countries where there are, there have been like, it's like um, completely locked down. Yeah. What do you call that? Uh, prison. (laughs) <laughs> yes, oh yes. yes yes this was a i forgot to mention that part this took place in a prison oh okay yeah the guy was carrying a gold, goldfish outside the prison walls and they immediately brought him right back in. wow yeah They're like you can't do that yeah sir. if he's out there how's back he to doing yourself. that yeah, yeah. Get, get back in there climb back in that hole you dug you know what wall. you did <laughs> take your fish go back in serve your sentence <laughs> 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 Did you ever have a goldfish as a pet? Mm, no, no, I had real pets. Yeah, that was one thing. Like, I was trying to think of like what would be the uh, because right now, like, uh, I've seen a lot of articles about pets and like the different shelters are empty right now because a lot of pets were adopted, which is amazing. And I swear to God, anyone who takes their pet back after a lockdown, I'm going to go to their house personally and punch them in the face. <laughs> so, do you not? do that lightly you accept a pet it's now your family and it's not just a kid that you can give back right. you know what i mean like, right <laughs> yeah you can't take your animal goblin back to the shelter right um so that's i mean that was interesting to me because it's, it was like the it was like the covid19 spread across the world pretty rapidly for the most part and uh as people were preparing for potentially being indoors for weeks at a time uh, with you know, as lockdown orders went into effect, it was interesting to me that people went to Costco and Walmart and wherever they stocked up on toilet paper and canned goods, and then stopped buying and figured, hey, let's get a pet right now. We're going to be home. Yeah, that was. A, I, I did not think that that would happen. That's it's super weird. I would have expected those. I would have expected shelters to be uh in mm. trouble because yeah. they had too many pets and not enough people to take care of them yeah while people were stuck home i'm certainly happy that the uh opposite has happened yeah absolutely but i think i, I have to uh say that it's probably a really really great time to get a pet um to help them um uh uh become a part of your your home and your routine but i don't know what it's going to be like when you go back to like quote-unquote normal life and and people are out of the house for maybe a a few more hours at a time than what they're used to but i mean getting them acclimated to your home and and potty training them and showing them when they can go out and getting them into a routine and stuff like that i think that's really great yeah that's a good point I, i had not thought about that aspect this is a good time for to build those bonds and to kind of train. Yeah. They have nothing but time. Yeah. I mean, some people, I mean, some people are, um, uh, busy with work and families and stuff like that too. But I mean, if, uh, if people had the bandwidth to bring on a pet during this time, perhaps they had the, perhaps they did so knowing that they had time to then kind of give the, uh, the animal a good onboarding experience to the family. Or people who maybe live alone, and um, oh, yeah, absolutely. The, knowing that they wouldn't be able to have uh, a companion through this, uh, yeah. which is really challenging. That's um, a great point. Like, I think if I was living alone, knowing that this was coming and had been and had been interested in an animal, I may have wanted to maybe take a chance on getting uh, uh, going to a shelter and seeing if I could maybe make a connection with like a a cat. Mm-hmm. I feel like a dog would, would maybe you would be less. Uh, what's the right word? Like there might not be a, a, as good a chance of making a connection at a shelter if you just went there once. Yeah. But I feel like you might find a you might fall in love with a cat right away and be able to take your cat home and maybe maybe that would it's be a possible. better experience than a, a dog. You maybe? might see a little bit more of its true personality. Yeah. Right away. Yeah. You might not. I'm not really sure. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. This is all just completely anecdotal. I have no science to back that up but I, i'm saying this to say that i would maybe be interested in getting a, a cat to 
mm-hmm. to uh, have a companion because that is kind of sad. Yeah, being, uh, home alone. Yeah. Hmm. So that's and I'm, good. My name's Kevin, so I know a lot about being home alone. <laughs> you, <laughs> Kevin. <sighs> um. Oh yeah. Um, Let's move on to headline number three. Yeah, headline number three. And the increased thoughts of hauntings. Uh, well, sign me up for this conversation because this <laughs> sounds fun. <laughs> yeah. So I think that the idea is that uh, as people spend more time at home, they maybe maybe they're hearing sounds that they may have not have heard before and are thinking that maybe it's haunty stuff happening. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it may or may not be. It's just maybe your imagination goes a little wacky. Yeah. So speaking of being out of routine, so if you're not used to being home all the time, maybe they're, you know, maybe you're gone during the day and um, you may not know that there's a squirrel living in your attic and it's, <laughs> right. you know, most active between the hours of 11 a.m. and 12 p.m. and you're like, this happens every day. It's got to be a haunting. Right? <laughs> right. I've never heard this before. Not really taking into account. Yeah. You're not usually home at that time. So, right. Or maybe you're home at a time that you're not normally home and you walk into like a ghost like sitting on your couch watching TV in like a robe. They're like, Tiffany, I didn't know. What are you doing here? And they vanish. And you're like, where are your like, pants, wait, ghost? What, what the hell? I sit on that couch. That was my embroidered robe. Uh, How did you do that? How'd you ghost my robe? If you get ectoplasm on that robe, so help me God. So help me God. (laughs) You sicko. Now, we've talked about uh, ghosts a lot on the show because it is a topic that we are both fascinated by and have some experience with and have done some ghost hunting. We've done some lots of reading we, it's just a, it's a fascinating topic lots for of us. experiences we've had lots of experiences so i was going to ask you what have you had any have you had any ghostly experiences during the day i'm not saying here but just in general in general yeah 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 because i think most of the time they take place at night but that could just be because that's when the dust settles and that's when people are home more people are gone like there could be ghostly stuff happening during the day you're just not there to hear it yeah yeah i what i mean by the dust settles is that like uh, maybe you hear things in the middle of the night because that's when your brain is kind of shut down like you're ready for sleep you're in that restful sort of state so chances are the static of the day of like little noises here and there whether it's traffic or you know people running around you know maybe your family is loud you know maybe you have the tv on stuff like that all of that is going on during the day but at night all of that dust sort of settles and and falls to the ground and suddenly it's silent so there's nothing left but for you to actually listen to the silence and see what's going on around you. So maybe you think that stuff happens more at night when in actual reality it's happening all the time. Mm, you're just not tuned into it. Yeah. You're distracted by everything else. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that could be too. There could be a lot more. Um, I mean, we are we are probably as a human race the most distracted right now we've ever been. Yeah. In our lives with, with, uh, with the iPhones and the Androids and the whatnots. Mm-hmm. But... Um, so there could be a lots of weird that could it, could it would it be interesting that you know we are missing out on more ghostly experiences because we're just distract too distracted to see them yeah which may be a good thing if you're terrified of of seeing things but yeah I'm trying to think if I've ever seen anything during the day before have I seen anything during the day well I've never seen anything really yeah just that one time but we were together for that yeah and that was nighttime yeah and it was in a very haunty known to be haunty former. Uh, tuberculosis ward of an old hospital Mm -hmm. uh the only i don't i've seen i did see a couple well i've seen a couple things during the during the day Mm -hmm. um i saw when i was in high school i think i've told you we talked about this before i I think i don't know i was maybe i was standing at my locker in high school and i looked down the end of the hallway and i was the only person in the hallway i had a hall pass i want to be clear i had a hall pass (laughs) no rules being broken there had a hall pass dylan follows the rules the hall monitor came by they checked i was legit but i looked down to the end of the hallway where there was a a stair a big staircase that would go up to the second floor and i saw the lower half of an apparition like walking basically what i saw were a pair of legs walking up the stairs 
It's so weird. As weird as that sounds, that's it was just like you saw. I saw like jeans and sneakers, but the top half was real fuzzy. But the bottom half was very clear, and then it just faded away. Which is amazing that you saw someone in jeans. I think that's so rare. Yeah. Well, the two times I've seen, well, I don't want to say where I saw this because I don't want anyone. To, yeah. I don't want people to be. I don't want the per- people that may be living there still to be scared by this. So I won't say where it was. But I also, when I was a, a kid again saw the a lower half of, of, a, of a body uh-huh. like walk into a wall essentially yeah and it was like jeans and like sneaker it was like a you know a human yeah and it had it was jeans and yeah it, and i saw that clear as i mean it was so crystal clear that lower half of the body uh-huh. that it stopped me in my tracks and the people i was with were like what and i was like i didn't want to scare them and I was like, oh, nothing. <laughs> but I saw something just walk through a wall. And yeah. it was clearly dressed like a human of that time period. Yeah. It wasn't a Victorian dress or anything. That's so it wasn't weird. like a man in black. It was just jeans. <laughs> and uh, that was the same thing I saw in school. And it was so, and it's weird. Uh, and I didn't, and it was, it was never anything I ever talked about until this podcast. But um, I remember watching an episode of Ghost Hunters and, and they talked about someone, one of the things they were investigating was like a lower half apparition and i was like that i've seen that that's so crazy that yeah it like justified my wacky thing that i saw yeah you know and then i also saw my grandfather during the day after he had, had passed away mm-hmm. and it was clear that he was very solid and very uh realistic looking for lack of a better term if it was mm-hmm. a i don't believe it was a hallucination i don't think kids hallucinate i i was in my 20s <laughs> home from college yeah dad had just saved me from a from choking on a little jolly rancher that's why you were so close to the veil (laughs) so close but he was a full body solid mass looked like i was looking at like a real living human being Mm -hmm. i I don't know so i've seen that stuff during the day and you may think that sounds insane or ludicrous and that's fine i know what i saw and i know what it made me feel and I'm, i'm okay with us agreeing or disagreeing yeah so whatever um so yeah i could imagine people might see something like solid in their house or something and be completely freaked out. And then maybe it's somebody like, Oh God, I'm sorry. It's like a, a Beetlejuice situation. <laughs> <laughs> they see something or they hear something or they, they sense something. And yeah. that's, that's usually, it's almost creepier during the day. Cause you don't expect it during the day. Yeah. Cause you, your guards down. Cause you right. feel safe then. Well, the light usually makes you feel safe. Yeah. You know, yeah. That's when it gets dark. out. Is when things get a little spooky usually. Right. Yeah. It's fear of the unknown. It's, it's natural human instinct. That's right. why we have the fear of the dark is cause we can't see through it. Yeah. So, um, that, that totally makes sense. I mean, that's not to say that the, to bring the opposite, uh, the uh, logical part into it of debunking things is, you know, maybe, maybe being home all the time, it, it, maybe there's, uh, you know, electric magnetic fields within the house that That's people true. aren't used to being exposed to. So maybe it could cause them to have headaches or nausea or um, possibly hallucinate or experience yeah. uh, a strong feeling of dread because they're, they're, constantly right next to whatever is emitting that feeling right. off so right. it could give them the sense that they think that their house is haunted even if it's not yep or it could be like a mold or maybe like it could a, be mold, yeah. um maybe it's like a slanty you know how like you feel funny disoriented like, yeah, and, yeah yeah like mm-hmm. a certain slant could make you feel a little strange you, you know, might not right? even realize why yeah right, right. for it's sure like, so i can imagine that. there's probably a lot of false calls right now to, to ghost hunters and yeah like, i'm sorry but i can't come over and investigate right now because uh you know the whole world <laughs> as it is right now we'd love to get over there as if soon you as would possible. like to evacuate your house and then allow me to come in in a hazmat suit sit there and then wait for your house to be fumigated after two weeks and then you'd like to go back in maybe i just <laughs> it could be a month and a half process but if you need us to get to the bottom of this we can do it and here's how we're going to do it we're going to come over we're going to be responsible we're going to be wearing masks mm-hmm. my team is going to set up a series of laptops around the house and mm-hmm. we're going to then zoom call in mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. just check those zoom cameras and see if anything funny is happening yeah yeah that's right <laughs> that's right it'll be the best case scenario we can record everything you know we, we have all that equipment up 
ready to go and then we'll be set up safely in our van <laughs> outside i like the idea of them using zoom to, to hunt ghosts now <laughs> <laughs> and then i imagine like the the uh, brady bunch style series of squares with all the cameras <laughs> and like beetlejuice is in one of them and like casper's in another one of them one of the ghosts from scooby-doo the ghosts of, then it's revealed to be mr ferguson who was <laughs> trying to defraud always the town. yeah <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> well, Kevin, one of these is a real headline. Yes. Well, only one of these stories, Tiffany, Man. that we joked and had a great time. These are very about, silly. Is Only one is real. Which one do you think might be the real story? I'm going to go with the goldfish one. It seems so oddly specific. <laughs> it really does. And, and for reason, because uh, that is a real headline. <laughs> <laughs> it. Sorry. That's okay. It's an article I came across in the uh, Toronto Sun. I want to hear more. I'm yes. so excited. Yes. Uh, so here we go. As the headline is Spanish cops bust a man taking goldfish for a walk during lockdown. There is a picture here of the uh, uh, a tweet from the uh, Spanish police department and you can see the goldfish on the bench in a, in a classic goldfish bowl as you would expect. It is a classic goldfish bowl. Classic goldfish bowl. That seems so like I would be so scared of dropping that bowl. Oh, I know. I'd be too. terrified. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, th- so the headline, so this is uh, from the New York Post. He's one fishy suspect. <laughs> a man was busted for breaking Spain's strict coronavirus lockdown by taking his goldfish out for a walk, police said on Friday. Mm-hmm. The unidentified pet owner was spotted sitting on a bench with his finned friend inside a bowl in Lagrano, northern Spain. He appeared to be taking advantage of a rule allowing people to take their pets out to relieve themselves. He's not the first person to pull a stunt amid Spain's strict coronavirus state of emergency. Last month, police in Murcia... I thought it said Murica, like how we say <laughs> America in like slang. Uh, caught a man in a T-Rex costume roaming the streets. <laughs> Spain was the country with the most COVID-19 cases after the U.S. with 226,629 reported uh, as of this article being written. Uh, so, yeah, so there's a rule where you can, you're allowed, you, you have to stay inside, but you are, you are allowed to go outside to take your pet for a walk. Which makes sense. So this guy was trying to circumvent the rule by... He's like, fine, I'm taking my pet for a walk. I don't want to see the issue. Taking my goldfish for a walk. Yeah, absolutely. That's a solid argument. It really is. You can't go wrong with this guy's logic. Yeah. But that's really interesting. So this... Uh, so Spanish man hides in a T-Rex costume to avoid coronavirus lockdown. Yeah. What, I, I, that's very silly to me. Have you seen... Have you read... No. The, have you seen this article? Okay, so let's just do an extra bonus article here. Bonus article. b b b bonus so uh, the he- the uh, the headline is a Spanish man hides in T Rex costume to avoid coronavirus lockdown. A man. So in- he he wasn't using it as protection. He was trying to avoid. Maybe he th- was he trying to was he trying to get police to think he was a real T Rex? Let's find out. <laughs> <laughs> a person in an inflatable dinosaur costume in Spain was caught on camera getting stopped by police for flouting the country's lockdown restrictions. The viral video, which was tweeted by the police department, begins with the police vehicle slowly approaching the Tyrannosaurus Rex as it waddles across the street in the crosswalk. One of the officers gets out of the car and briefly chats with a costume character on the street corner while a camera from above captures the moment of levity. Moments later, the dinosaur is on its on his way again, ambling down the street, and the video ends. Throughout the video's entirety, the theme song to Jurassic Park plays in the background. <laughs> <laughs> the local police department uh, used the encounter to remind residents to comply with the country's travel restrictions, which permits brief dog walks, but not walking around in a dinosaur suit. And then it goes into talking about how Spain is so hard. To I get. see. Okay. So he was trying to like walk himself. He wasn't, uh, he was an animal, <laughs> not a human. It's funny that we're like, I don't understand why people can't just follow rules, but it's not just here. It's like other, other places, too. It's well, not about you, you asshat. Well, in, a, in, in Spain, people are walking around breaking the uh, quarantine rules by wearing T-Rex costumes. In our country, they're storming uh, government offices with, with guns. guns. So a little bit of a different take here in America. <laughs> a little different in America and America. Yeah. Very different. Very different. <laughs> different places. Ugh. 
What a world. What a world. Well, great job, Kevin. <laughs> that was a, this was a fun. This was fun. This was very very fun. Yeah, we had a good time. I hope you did too. Thanks for uh, listening, everybody. Uh, we we hope that you enjoyed a, a little uh, bit of the bonus stuff in the beginning, uh, talking about recipes by state. If you have a fun recipe that maybe you've tried or you've come up with, uh, maybe put it in your Instagram story and tag us um, at, at Fag Headlines Podcast um, on Instagram or Facebook because yeah. I think it would be really fun to see. Or if you have it on Twitter, let's let's check that out too. Yeah. Um, I know that Kevin and I have uh, enjoyed making new things and trying new things, and like tonight for dinner we at some point decided to buy like a two bag pound or two pound bag of carrots. And so we're like, what are we going to do with all these carrots? Um, they last a long time. <laughs> FYI. Um, so tonight we made a carrot and sweet potato soup and it turned out pretty good. It really did. It was pretty delicious actually. Yeah. And that's just an example of uh, fun, random things we've done. And uh, we all need to eat. We all love to eat. So yeah, share your recipes with us. We'd love to see them. Tag us uh, at fake headlines podcast uh, on Instagram. Uh, or fake head pod on Twitter as stated, or you can email us fake headlines podcast at gmail.com. And we'll throw it right in our Instagram story. Uh, and slash Facebook. Um, what else is new? Oh, if you want to email us, uh, for any reason at all, again, fake headlines podcast at gmail.com. All of our social medias. Yes. And also if you have a, like a, if you have something you want us to promote, uh, email us at fake headlines podcast at gmail.com. We'd love to help our friends out during the, uh, epidemic. Absolutely. Pandemic epidemic pandemic. It's more of a pandemic. It's a pandemic. Yeah. It's a pan. It's a pan. It's it a pan. is a pan. Uh, yes. Uh, Twitter at fake head pod, Facebook and Instagram at fake headlines podcast. And, uh, uh, oh, also if you listen to us on, uh, Apple music or not Apple music, uh, what do you call it? Pod Apple podcasts. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, what is it again? Grandpa Dylan. <laughs> if you're on the iTunes, um, if you're using a uh, real player four on your Intel based PC, if um, you've uh, downloaded us from Napster, <laughs> please run a virus scan before sharing it. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Uh, you can uh, leave us a, a five star review on there. All you gotta do is click on the five stars. If you want to write a little quick review, just saying how much you like the show. I love nice words; they make me feel good, and it just helps the visibility on the Apple uh, charts because the Apple Podcast app, uh, Apple being the sort of uh, you know where all podcasts sort of began, so to speak. Um, please uh, support us there, and it helps us stay visible because there's a lot of podcasts out there. Also, word of mouth that that goes a long way. Yeah. Tell your friends. Tell your friends. New Zealand and Australia know what's up. They know what's up. We're still charting like mofos down there. We might be terrified to go there, but maybe one day we'll make it because now we got <laughs> crazy stuff happening here too. So I don't know. Hey, we're not safe anywhere. And we're where anything is possible. <laughs> we but, love you guys down under. <laughs> I didn't mean uh, that in a filthy way. Yeah, we love. That's where yeah. they are located. We also love your down unders too. So, yes. Uh, <laughs> I assume they're very pleasant. I'm. We we we, know. we don't know. Ooh. We don't know. We don't know. But thanks for listening, everybody. We really appreciate it. <laughs> it's ended on a weird note. Uh, that's what we do. So thanks for listening, everybody, and we will see you next week. <laughs> Bye.